Hello, Adela. Hi, Vera Andrea. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm so glad that we found time to um, meet each other and uh, talk about innovation and uh, technology in fashion and textile industry. So how about, uh, Odetta, you give us a brief introduction about yourself and uh, tell us what is your relationship with the fashion and textile industry? Sure. So hi, everyone again. So I am Odetta Valishkite. And my life is, you know, uh, it's connected between two poles. It's technology and marketing. Uh, to be more precise, I am business tech projects uh, manager at tech company IBM by day and marketing strategist uh, at my own creative uh, marketing studio, Story Founders by Night. This is how I, uh, most uh, of the cases I introduce myself actually, but working in tech over um, six years and in the marketing industry for over eight years, I have already always been, you know, between tech and creativity. So at the exact point where fashion tech is actually, so, you know, tech is, is uh, structurized, very realistic, on point, and uh, fashion is artistic, full of ideas, creativity. And this is where um, the intersection and then, you know, the magic happens. So, and this is uh, what really interests me the most. Digital innovative solutions, the future of fashion, the future of retail. You know, we are, um, what I can say, in, in, in where the tech and creativity meets in digital space. That's super interesting. And I'm very excited to hear more about the linkage that you found out yourself. But let's start with uh, your own perspective about fashion. What is it to you personally? Um, you know, I will be very, very honest. Neither style or, you know, nor fashion uh, was a huge thing for me. Yeah. Anything, I mean, anytime. However, my dad um, had and, and still has a textile related company. So, since the early age um, of mine, I have been introduced not only to business, but particularly to fabrics, to textile, to manufacturing, and technology itself. Uh, so, when I have joined the company, I just dived into innovations uh, world and since textile industry was um, the next thing since since the childhood to me um, so during one textiles um, expo in in germany um, around four years ago i have met one lithuanian who was studying um, in germany and creating a bacterial based uh, textiles and its designs in the lab so this got me so excited that fashion can be something super innovative, uh, super interesting. And um, that was, you know, what interested me. But overall, a fashion, you know, it's, it's a self-expression for me. It doesn't matter if you will be, you know, from, from head to toes uh, in a black color or, or dressed up or something, but you will always be able to showcase your personality. Uh, whether you are black dressed or white dressed, you know, but it, it still um, points to, to the values you, you have or, or um, personality you, you have, yeah. I can totally agree to that. I think it is such a great form of expression ourselves. And um, yes, it's very nice to see and observe the personalities of others as well in the way they dress and present themselves. And yeah, actually, and 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 some cases, you know, as I mentioned, uh, I, I mean, I, it's in, in these times uh, to mention uh, dark color is not uh, the best thing ever, but, <laughs> but you know, but as I mentioned, that even though person is is dressed up in, in black color or something, it's uh, uh, you still have a possibility to interpret it, you know, their um, to 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 think of what, what what kind of personality he is or she is. Totally. And I would only compliment that uh, point and say that it is sometimes even a cultural thing. Um, living in Copenhagen, Denmark, I could see that the trends and style is completely different from 
how it is mm-hmm. in Lithuania or even looking to the US. Yes, um, mm-hmm. And uh, for example, the East coast of the US resembles more to how people dress here in Copenhagen, Denmark, and like the Western coast, California. This is completely different uh, style and completely different outfits that people choose. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it is a representation of the region, of the geographical location where you are as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very good insight, yeah. So having uh, followed the textile industry uh, through very early days, what would you say are the biggest changes that you notice uh, these days? Um, I wouldn't say that... uh like looking in the in a bit longer term apart from uh, pandemics i wouldn't say that uh, we have uh, a huge progress or you know super much uh, uh, d- differences during uh, the, the long term that we can have or we can see however i definitely can admit that particular technologies uh, have evolved and grew quite significantly And um, for example, in due to pandemic technological changes and transformation itself was absolutely accelerated. It just pumped up, you know, and brands had no choice but to search for the different touch points of consumer to find the bridge between physical, which was already, you know, decreasing. And now we have so many physical stores uh, closed and due to quarantine cannot be reopened or opened uh, at all. So these different touch points of customers, brands had to, to think of the bridge. How can they com- connect this missing physical um, area with the digital? So, and in, this interaction have been dra- so drastically increased in this case. So, and, and here comes uh, very few, but very cool areas where brands try to find in this new connection, this new uh, touch point with the uh, customer. So like digital clothing, VR, AR augmented or uh, virtual reality, gaming industry is, oh my, we can talk about it later, it's, it's, it's it's booming um, and IT and you know virtual influences and uh, digital podiums and virtual events actually it's it's really booming and it's a necessity today uh, we had a very first virtual circle of fashion summit one month ago and it was it was crazy how many people went there you know uh, you can um, you had a possibility to watch it on on computer or on with oculus um virtual reality um glasses or wearable or what i can say so and it was so engaging people were going in the booths to listen for uh, presentations for really good insights and it it was the first ever event in done purely in virtual reality so pandemic is especially right now is really shifting our physical emotional experiences and connections what we had with physical things into a digital environment and then the brands are trying to create this the same or at least similar emotional experience um, in digital area do you think that uh, this can uh, ever be uh, replicated? Can the digital experience compensate the physical experience? Uh, to, yeah, to be very honest, uh, not at all. I mean, to be from my personal exp- experience, from my personal point and view, I mean, I am a human and I know that most of you are. I mean, all of us are, but and we are humans and we really miss this physical touch we we want this warm next to uh, us you know and the person to person we want smile to uh, to, to be seen you know in in front of you not uh, through a virtual screen but absolutely it's a very good opportunity right now to have it at least you know imagine if you would wouldn't have it at all so it would be even um, worse uh, yeah and so it's helpful right now, but as I mentioned, I don't believe that we will be able to change our need of a physical touch into the digital solution. And 
digital only will expand only will augment our lives yeah because it, it will not it will not replace i mean i i have a huge doubt that it, it will replace uh, maybe for some people who don't want this t human touch maybe but for most of us, I, I really believe that we will still meet, we will still touch uh, fabrics because we will want to see it in, in you know, in in, um, in front of us and then touch it. And that's what I think. <laughs> I think it, we will not lose it. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a hard time imagining that we will be indulged in the virtual reality so much that we will be using virtual backgrounds, virtual clothing, virtual hair uh, styles. I think this is all great and it can be definitely used in particular areas. But uh, mm -hmm. I think you are so right saying that we will still meet each other. We will still interact in real life. And when I look back into um, our history, we started off inventing clothes because it was cold we had something to to, to wear mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. even if we will be using the um virtual um clothes backgrounds uh, hairstyles we will still need some kind of clothing yes, exactly to exactly yeah even well, actually if there is a, if you touch this uh, topic so during my uh, you know webinars or seminars for for, for the audiences i say Let's, let's try to imagine what if we would have all augmented reality glasses and we would be dressed up all the same in real life, yeah? But due to the possibility to have augmented reality glasses, we could change our outfits anytime, anyhow, whenever we want and how how many times you want and we don't we would not need you know to think whether it's a, it's doing a huge impact on on our planet or not even though it still a bit does five percent in comparison to to the 100 percent of of our um physical uh clothing but uh, but yeah that would be even an interesting experience i guess that everyone would be dressed up in real life more or less you know in comf comfortable, really super nice uh, clothes, and and we would still be able to add enhance them, uh, you know, to as, as I mentioned before, avoid augment them, and uh, using this technology that we can have. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting point. I think imagining that alternative reality is a mind blowing thing for us right now. But let's uh, look. I wanted to say 20 years from now, but uh, with this uh, current speed of technology, maybe 10 years from now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe we will listen to this conversation again uh, in 10 years time and uh, we will have some interesting reflections to make. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's a good one. But let's, let's see where it goes um, uh, through time and, and how far we will uh, develop and uh, innovate. Uh, you mentioned the 5% um, impact. What did you have uh, in mind with that? Yes. Yeah, so um, what I mean, it's that digital clothing, if we would use digital clothing, that would make only, it would uh, make 95% less impact than in comparison to the physical clothing and to physical production of the material and, and the clothes. So this is what I meant that, uh, and that 5%, you know, why it's still not 100%, it's free, actually. So because we are still, in order to create this digital fashion, we still need, you know, computers, we still need electricity. We still, we still are using, um, even though really a reduced amount of um, resources, but we still, yeah, we still have this 5%, uh, you know, usage. And this number is, it doesn't come, you know, from, from the sky. It's, it's made by the fabricant, one of the biggest digital fashion houses in, in the world. Yeah. Okay. I would like to then put my view towards that, that this 5%, mm -hmm. um, so that people could also understand there are there will be some designer work put into that to create those outfits. There would be mm -hmm. electricity used for that. There would be also digital space uh, used as a storage for those designs. The servers, they hold the information 
of digital objects and that consumes energy. And I think this is one of the things that uh, usually gets overlooked these days or not taken into account. It's, I think, a very valid point to consider that digital space is also consuming energy and sometimes it consumes a lot of energy and it generates a lot of uh, carbon footprint. Um, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. probably significantly less than uh, producing uh, physical clothes, uh, mm -hmm. but we cannot overlook uh, this fact and say that digital world is completely waste free. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is what I also mentioned that uh, this statement can, cannot be cannot be done. And to the to the people who are saying that you know it's 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 let's do it digital because it's uh, it's el it eliminates all the the worst things, uh, what the worst, the worst things that can uh, physical to do. So that's that's not not a good point. So I absolutely agree with you. So talking about this area even more, uh, how do you see a sustainability aspect to be bridged within a digital uh, innovation? So you know, in in my super simple opinion, uh, sustainability fashion, either is physical or digital. It's is is nothing but, but consciousness, and um, uh, consciousness about our consumers, being conscious about our actions, about how we do business, how we buy, how we sell, how we utilize, and and uh, what we have, and, and how we how we utilize what we have already. So so consciousness should be also about what else should happen to shake up everything, all the physical industry in, in sort of, in, in some of the case, digital, and to push, uh, to push us, you know, to, to love our fragile planet. And uh, that bridge that you just mentioned, I believe that on the help of the technologies, we can achieve that a bit more because I'm very skeptical towards, as, as I mentioned before, yeah, that 100 based free and let's save the world. Uh, you know, we are humans, we have needs. We still need uh, physical things. We still need food. We still need something. And this leads us to the situation that there will be still some waste. And either we are moving in digital or either we are using only physical and moving in digital, in my opinion, that bridge is an absolute and ultimate helper right now that we can at least do something to reduce something, you know? And that bridge to digital is at least something, in my in my opinion. This is a, such a... Um, sensitive topic trying to, to to think of the whole planet then i know that we still have such a huge majority uh, of our um, society who don't care about the environment they don't care about how we act how we use how we do things and it's it's so yeah as i mentioned it's so sensitive sensitive topic you know because we can't talk about it so much but we somehow need to to reach peace this part of a society and maybe digital is where the exact bridge how can we reach them how can we interest them and to make um, a bit more conscious about about sustainability yeah totally i i can only agree to that especially looking at the younger generation who is basically growing up on technology uh, and they are growing up in the digital world i think this is one of the ways to address them we cannot mm -hmm. be stubborn yeah. and yeah. say that, um, oh, we will only use those methods because they used to work for ages and generations. But um, we have a uh, growing up uh, young people who look up to all the famous influencers on Instagram. They are looking at the YouTubers and you name it. And uh, these young kids, they are soon to turn to young adults and start to having their purchasing power. So I think we have to learn to speak their language as well and, and reach them. And uh, also, uh, since the world is going towards technology, uh, innovation and uh, improvements in the um, uh, digital world, I think it is definitely something to um, take the opportunity in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
I think I have uh, one company that uh, I was recently exposed to, and it's called Atakak. If you've heard of it, it's a Swedish company. And the way they um, reduce waste with their technology solution is that they create all the prototypes for a clothing design online. And in this way, they don't have to produce anything physically to try it out. So they only create models uh, by, use, by using some software. And then once people order it, only then they print it, cut it out, and uh, uh, make the order custom to the uh, person uh, who has purchased the clothing, which I think is a, one good enabler as well to cut the waste in, in, in a part of the production. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. Um, yeah, just trying to, to rem uh, remember one also of a company. They are actually they are working on on three D uh, models, you know, and and uh, for three D printing too. Yeah, it, it's not only the the option, but of course to check and to do such a personalized and such a specific uh, product with the sizes with everything to really fit the right end consumer. So that that is really really good point, and to not only you know to Eliminate eliminate this um, waste, but also to to have better, better designs, yeah, better fitting, better uh, yeah visualizations. Yeah. I also am aware that the online orders has free deliveries, and we have hundred days return, uh, and uh, it became so flexible that some companies at the moment they are even thinking to themselves that they are losing a lot of money. First of all, on doing the free returns, and uh, mm -hmm. another thing is that they end up throwing away the returns instead of selling them back. And the rate is actually pretty high. I know it's mm -hmm. around 90% of the orders which are returned and a, a good part of them reaches the landfill afterwards. It doesn't reach the end consumer back. So talking about that, I think uh, making better fitting from the very start is one of the crucial things. What do you think about that? Yes, absolutely. So um, b better fitting uh, and solutions, um, so solutions like FitFinder, which is used in Burberry and ASOS and in all, actually many our luxury and fast fashion companies, uh, they are increasingly the demand for them is increase, really increasing. And this virtual size recommendations, and um, actually when we talked uh, before the, the podcast, you mentioned Unspawn, Unspawn, yeah, the company who is doing on-demand uh, jeans. So that is really a good example how can they uh, produce the product and, and have a fitting beforehand they will try on and say okay this does not fit me and they are using you know the technologies and many many companies are trying to to do so you know and um many years ago there were first solutions like green costumes with touch points uh, electronics included in in the fabric and you know it's like um like a diving costume something like that looking uh, product and you had a possibility to um, translate your measurements, your full body measurements into, into computer, into app, into, into digital space. And by, by these measurements, companies were able to recommend you the better size or, or the best size. But nowadays, as we have, as I mentioned, this augmented reality possibility, we have our mobile phones and all the commerce is going not into e-commerce, you know, but M-commerce as I mentioned in, in, in one uh, really good conference last week that really catch my ear. Um, you know, mobile commerce, and we are using phones, and we can scan our bodies. We can we can go around, and and due to image recognition and visual recognition, uh, due, due to artificial intelligence, they can 
use these technologies and help us to 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 find that size. So that's a, that's a very good point, and I hope I really hope that this will be uh, used more frequently and more brands will try to adapt the solution because, um, as you just mentioned, returns are amazingly huge problem, amazingly, and why they are you know they doesn't they didn't like color or. What else? So why don't you, you know, take a look at at online shop more or on the product photos a bit in, in closer look. So actually, this is this um, um, this is one topic that really digital companies again, digital clothing companies are trying to solve. But one also apart from sizing and unfit size, uh, another problem is that many people, due to that, you also also mentioned social media. They are using this and they are trying to live the way that purchase, take a photo and give it back, you know, in return. So this way of life is not sustainable and it's a huge troublemaker for the industry too. And, you know, it's it's like a snowball because uh, people want to have these uh, different clothing uh, on themselves because the social media is dictating these rules. And uh, all, all the people, not all the people, but still majority of the people are, are following this and then social media companies and tech companies they are still trying to push more of this content because this is what people like this is what people uh, demand you know or watch this is what they pay attention to and it's it's a, it's a really huge snowball effect that um everything related and you know the the, the model that for example cir circular uh fashion or circle economy trying to achieve that you know think about planet people and profit because you know we all need to, to live from somehow we, we still we, oh, all the businesses still need profit but everything is, as I have mentioned for the first time it's a, such a big snowball effect but every everything is connected in not in the right direction what i can say it's it's not connected to to for the better yet but uh, we can see many actions to be to be done and already being progressed and being um, delivered that to, to reduce amount of social media usage re, re, uh, reduce usage of the clothing uh, do there's a new term actually also um, re-commerce that yeah. is uh, you know many commerce terms e-commerce and commerce re-commerce <laughs> but re-commerce is more related you know to, to fashion to sustainability that let's try to reuse recycle reinvent ourselves you know resell rent and uh, it's it's um, this is the way we should be heading uh, to yeah totally and I have heard of um, a small e-commerce company, uh, uh, Riflon, uh, from mm -hmm. uh, France, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you heard of them as well? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I think yeah, what, it's yes. so cool what they do, right? They integrate the uh, reselling platform within the existing companies. Um, infrastructure yeah, from first hands to, to the third hands uh, the, the, this is what they call it it's uh, then yeah the, exactly what they interpret uh, the reselling so they, they people can you know exchange and finally uh, have a solution for my, my problem I just mentioned before uh, but if you need something if company cannot rent the cloth you know for one photo shoot or for for, for one whatever the need is then maybe a, another person who already did, did that can do rent for other person and then we can use one one the same you know fashionable or trendy uh or close on trend that can be used for 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 many people so that's i mean i love that idea and it's i hope that it also comes to, to lithuania's market or you know something in a bigger scale <laughs> me too and i think from a company's point of view that's also very interesting and it's another stream of uh, potential um, profit because they can utilize the same garment again and again and again instead of releasing a new collection every half a year with a yeah, or 50, 52 times a year yeah, yeah. 52 <laughs> times a year as some fashion 
fast fashion companies. I mean, 52 times a year. I mean, it's, it's insane. It's what I have noticed since I have worked in the, uh, one of the biggest uh, fashion companies myself very early on in my career, mm-hmm. I have noticed that we would get the same fabrics in a slightly different way. So for example, one week we would get a sweater in uh, uh, zebra prints and then uh-huh. um, in, let's say, eight weeks, we would get a sweater with the exact same material, the same uh, zebra print, but maybe there will be a different button on the sleeve or something, which made me uh-huh. think that they just had a surplus of uh, fabric and then they just made exact same. Instead of doing the surplus production, they could mm-hmm. produce less yes. the quality and utilize the same garments because obviously the print was interesting that was uh, on demand but mm-hmm. um, they just uh, they could then instead uh, utilize the garment better and it would benefit everyone basically people and the planet and yeah. the company even yeah exactly yes yes i think this is where on demand um, concept will come at some point or or at least you know um, my vision would be you know we just we would go into physical store you know in some kind of uh, cabin or or in a box and they would scan us and you know whereas behind a, a machine for example like H&M just released uh, a couple of months ago yeah a month ago the the, the recycling machines in the stores so for example this is what would be also an option maybe in the future that we would select and see how they will look on us without any need to have a different uh, technologies in our home we still can use these physical stores we can still use these pop-up stores demo stores uh, to, to to have our wanted clothing on ourselves yeah so that's that's a good touch point I think so too and I am just a bit cautious with that correct me if I'm wrong but maybe Mm -hmm. there is a common um, opinion that I don't want to purchase something until I tried it on so producing on demand could Mm -hmm. be on in theory a great option but we also all know when we order something online we imagine how it will look like and then we get the product and it's totally off Mm -hmm. of course there might be reasons Mm -hmm. why it looks off on us but let's say um that on the with on-demand production if i receive a garment even if it was custom to, for me and everything must have been perfectly made to, to fit me i still am not sure whether i want to first of all uh, wait mm-hmm. and second of all uh, face this uncertainty when i can just go to the store try it out and make a decision right away and it doesn't take me weeks until i get the product Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, actually, I I read somewhere about this also, and they are saying that my a possibility also might be that to have this one cloth on the different sizes in store. So different clothes. You know, imagine you are coming into a store which you will have your product printed, uh, printed or produced on demand. But you can try it. For example, if you are going into a store, there are specific amount, limited amount of the clothes in different sizes that everyone can touch. Okay, I need Excel. Okay, so I'm uh, trying it on. Okay, I like it. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to to the uh, box and 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 in brackets that I mentioned. (laughs) Yeah, that uh, that I mentioned. You know, imaginary or whatever. this solution is what this would be, then I would get my product. Only then I would get my product. I think that that would be um, fulfilling what you just also mentioned that the problem that, okay, I still, uh, okay, it's, it's produced, but I still don't feel it. So I definitely agree with this. And personally myself, I also would like to, to do this way better than just order and say, okay, Will this fit me or not? And what should I do with this? If it's, it doesn't mean if shall I shall I feel again guilty because I had I bought something that doesn't fit me or I don't like it actually, yeah. So it's it's an emotional experience also. So I agree. 
I think there are some companies working on this. And as of my knowledge, um, as well, they are now doing those free iterations. So you can have at least one afterwards if you order online and mm-hmm. um, they try to customize. Um, so that's their business model. I recently listened to one talk and mm-hmm. um, a founder of Tula Fair, she only did the physical designs, but due to the pandemic, she switched to digital measuring and she didn't avoid going to places measuring their clients uh, with all the mm-hmm. precautions, of course. But uh, mm-hmm. she touched upon this uh, digital and uh, uh, through distance kind of measuring the client and, uh-huh. and, mm-hmm. and custom made. And she said it worked pretty well. So it makes me think that, okay, maybe it is possible. And um, it requires a bit of a change from our side, from consumer's point of view, how we would approach it, how do we feel about it? Mm -hmm. And yes, what are the um, factors that the brand can do for us to feel comfortable, to try it out, to see how it goes, and then still have a choice either after having purchased, either to return it or to iterate so that it would fit um, Mm -hmm. after Mm -hmm. all. Is there any yeah, other um, very interesting trends that you have noticed uh, going on these days? Um, absolutely. So I know that I've talked a lot about the dig- digital cl- clothing and digital fashion, but it is a future trend. It is a huge future trend. And, uh, you know, it's the fastest, one of the fastest uh, um, growing areas in, in uh, fashion right now, in fashion industry. And um, um, here comes, as I mentioned, Digital Fashion House Fabricant, with the first digital dress and sold almost on the t- $10,000 you know, and the Carlings company, which is really closely working with the Fabricant itself. And, and now we have, so, so these very two you know, pioneers of digital fashion, but now we have so many companies who are selling digital clothing. It's like um, XR Couture or Dress X, uh, Ukrainian ladies just created it and, um, pitched it uh, one month ago and launched it um, so it, it's it's really successful and myself uh, actually uh, if you would be interested I can show you one um, uh, my digital dress that I uh, was wearing for, for, for one of the magazines in, in Lithuania which will be released on, on January uh, for, for, for example how it looks you know how digital clothing is, is looking and it's it, and it looks really 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 realistic so we don't need you know to to buy our clothes so another really good and i think key trend is the virtual reality augmented reality as i mentioned that based on researchers actually augmented reality integration in uh, e-shop and and you know in our e-commerce store uh, like for example, three D viewing of a product, just you know, going around it, zooming it in a specific and really good detail, is increasing purchase conversions um, by two hundred fifty percent. And this was done by Shopify, one of the biggest growing commerce platforms in 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 the world right now. And uh, it's 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 really growing, and we can see. Um, this shift, uh, just trying to, to think of a, a really simple example. So IKEA used, it's not about fashion, but it's still AR, um, used um, Apple's AR kit, um, sort of an application and then solution to, I will say, scan your home. And then you can, you know, in the phone, in the app, you can, um integrate the needed furniture, the needed um, uh, furniture accessories. And then you can you know, augment your, your house and you see whether you need it or it's, it does fit or not. So the same with the fashion, the same with, um, uh, as, as we just talked about uh, virtual sizing. Then gaming industry. So gaming industry is the third huge, amazingly huge trend right now. I mean, it's it's a future, and as I mentioned, uh, maybe you remember that due to pandemics, brands were 
they had no choice but to search for different touch points for clients, different inter intersection points of clients that their consumers and to, as mentioned, to bring from physical to digital. And gaming industry is one of these trends, one of these mediums uh, where, again, the products of a fashion can be integrated. Because if you will think about it, since we were young, I, I have no doubt that many of us were playing like Sims or, or any other uh, games. And uh, as the really not the not so so long ago, we had an example of Sims 4 and Moschino uh, made a collaboration and Moschino sold uh, he, it's, its clothing and, and called skins, uh, you know, in, in, in a Sims game their person could use any kind of luxury um, luxury cloth on person's avatar without any you know thousands or, or hundreds of thousands uh, um, expenses so this actually is also another touch point between luxury industry and and consumer who is not so into the luxury so it's 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 another bridge between two of these different um, poles. And one more I, I would like to say, one more example is League of Leg Legends and Liz Lee Vuitton collaboration and the Riot Games, the creator of uh, Leagues of Leg Legends, they, they said that it's just the beginning, that they a collaboration on doing skins in the games, luxury brand skins in the games is just the beginning because it's it was sold out like it, like they just people were really interested in what, what okay so we can you know uh, use on ourselves not just uh, from futuristic no name uh, game skins but also you know Louis Vuitton okay we can use Marquino okay so what what else you know so they are really interested they are showing so they are showing and expressing themselves not only in real life now but also in the digital space and in this case the gaming industry is the most natural way of expressing it, of using it and expressing um, themselves so and these avatars that they that people are creating unfortunately i don't play games so that's a pity for me i i will try because for sure because it's interesting me right now because we have a fashion connection here but um but um but yeah but people are like their eyes are open and okay let's see what, what what's coming up and um yeah and uh, i think that what I can say as a last point, I will definitely need to touch this because it's virtual influencers. And, you know, virtual influencers, uh, starting from Lil Michaela or Shudu Graham, who was the first one, and Bermuda and all the other virtual computer generated uh, visual people in, in social media that we can see and, and, and hear right now, they also as some kind of a future what I can say because why it's good for example for brands because finally we can have a diversity we can have any kind of you know when we see on the screen a virtual person or virtual being we don't judge them because it's virtual we don't even care how they look because it's virtual so it's it's a huge, uh, I think, shift and for for diversity and you know for social health because uh, brands can, you know, marketing specialists say that we have to have some kind of a person or, or personality behind the brand who is um, expressing the brand's values on online, you know, showing his, uh, their faces and etc. So why you know in in case that person is not so. I would not say that likable, but in case it's it's you know different, and uh, for for me all are the same. But for other people, 
that difference might you know cause okay why should i buy from this brand because you know the girl uh, uh, the, the oversized dress is 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 no is, is speaking to me so it's just a very silly example but you know what i mean so and and here comes verse virtual influencers virtual beings that they can represent brands that they can without any inequality uh topic you know to 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 express whatever brands want and um and 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 yeah and for example for consumer and for user it's also helpful because brands as, as mentioned just they are creating these these influencers and uh, just the latest example the um, world health organization created um Knox frost uh boy who is a social media virtual influencer and he is encouraging people to uh, you know to, due to situation of happenings that we have to be conscious to be um careful to wear masks to to and that account is purely based on expressing what is happening in this in in COVID situation, and that's uh, and that's making uh, spreading an awareness of it. So it's it's many touch points, you know, where virtual influencers can be uh, taken into account in our strategies and our way of uh, we, we live. Um, but I think that these more or less are uh, digital clothing, clothing, VR, AR, gaming industry, and virtual uh, virtual influencers are more sort of saying, from my opinion, a, a key trends right now. In digital space actually i was just listening to you so carefully because it is mind-blowing i was uh, following you on every topic as you touched the point because first of all i grew up playing sims i myself i'm not a huge game uh, fan uh so if i played something that must have been either very good or so i just really liked it uh let's be honest uh but as a uh, as a regular girl i just loved sims it was a great place to build your own house dress up your avatar and um yeah. back in the days it was uh, h&m which made the collaboration with sims and they mm -hmm. released um, mm -hmm. Uh, extension package to uh, uh, have extra furniture or uh, clothing, mm -hmm. uh, which I was super uh, um, excited about. And I, of course, had it myself as well. And I would say they did a great job in raising the next generation of their, you know, consumer afterwards. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think yeah. that that, the, that relation is so good. And I totally agree. And from personal experience, I would say, it worked. So when you talk about um, luxury brands going into that area, I think as everywhere else, they have to be the leaders, they have to be the ones to aspire for. So if they go there, then they are kind of the trendsetters in mm -hmm. that industry. And I believe that a lot of other brands will be following up on that and then will also want to go in. And that opens so many options then that maybe this uh, extension for them becomes a business opportunity for them to earn money because those clothing will probably start to cost extra money. If you want to uh, dress your avatar with the brand, the big brand, then maybe you have to pay for it. Um, so I see a good business opportunity in there. And then uh, how it will slowly transit and how many uh, more brands will follow that direction, I believe. So mm -hmm. I was very um, carefully listening to what you were saying. And uh, in terms of the CGI models, those 3D models, mm -hmm. Uh, it's such an interesting trend. I love that uh, those um, models that we have so far, they represent a very regular person, people of color, and uh, also other uh, important uh, topics in the society right now. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. And then um, Lil Mikeller, she yeah. uh, is like a teenage girl, but she is mm -hmm. very regular she looks so real she now and has a boyfriend she now has oh, a boyfriend oh. <laughs> girl want to get <laughs> come on so this is very upsetting so yeah yeah sorry sorry to interrupt you Jen. no but i think um that was great because we are finally uh breaking those uh, fake ideologies that everyone yeah. mm -hmm. has to be perfect you have to have a certain type of body to be attractive for mm -hmm. example and I think this exactly. is great 
that the with the CGI we try to bring it to a um, very personal level so that many more people mm-hmm. could relate and it would depict our average um, daily life, which I think is great. Uh, there is um, of course a concern that maybe we won't need real models uh, in some time, which on one hand is of course we will uh, never um, replicate the feeling of the runway and the new collection launch, uh, which would happen in the physical space and our models going down the runway. But on the other hand, we can solve the problem of the model industry where they are either underpaid or they work in terrible conditions and they have those um, health issues in relation to food. So I think there are many more opportunities associated with that and they solve so many great problems of our society rather than looking into the risks and some scary factors that oh but I will lose my job or something like that it will be fine you will find Mm. another area to realize yourself and I think we will never uh, overrule the physical experience yeah yeah actually I uh you just touched uh, models uh, yes so uh, one it's 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 yeah it's now it's absolutely an invention phase it's absolutely a pioneer uh, idea but there is a couple of agencies of digital models created so right now uh, i will be if you would like i will be uh, able to send you a picture of absolutely um you know d- different kinds of people who are used as a models to to to, to showcase uh, clothing and etc and for example one of the digital model agencies is uh, human ai and uh, they just also launched a couple of month, months ago and they are focused purely on this differences of the people for example you know uh, different skin different hair different body even though there was the one thing that they are not using plus size yet so that oh. was a huge you know uh, um topic to discuss because it was also on social media going okay so why these are all s- super skinny ladies not uh, some you know different you know uh, like me for example a bit i'm a plus size and and uh, maybe medium size or plus size whatever you call it you know i'm not a skinny girl so and um uh, and that's uh, they're also the future is heading maybe you know for 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 different and accelerated social norms and this going further and beyond the uh, thinking that models have to be on the strict some super nonsense i'm so sorry for saying that size uh, you know matters and measurements and even though we still have uh, plus size models also industry really uh, on 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 um, it's already grew up industry but but still so still have uh, this 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 um, sort of saying um, a digma or whatever so yeah so the, the digital models are also a topic <laughs> even though not yet a trend i guess next year but but it's coming it's coming it's coming and maybe i painted it a bit uh, too dark uh, when i was expressing my opinion i don't think they will totally push out the uh, real models i know that there is mm-hmm. also a trend to combine both and get better synergies mm-hmm. out of that so mm-hmm. there is a lot of opportunities we are still in the process so a lot of great things are yet to come and i think this is just a new uh, trend and it's about bridging uh, real people and digital world together rather than trying to push uh, one over another um yes so exactly. i think this is so interesting it's it's really interesting times to be yeah, in it's thrilling yeah yeah it is it is it is yeah and how was your experience yeah, but- you briefly mentioned that you got to try the digital dress as well Yes, yes, I did. Uh, so the process is like that, that you need to select uh, clothing, then you buy it, and then you send them a photo on which you would like to see that clothing on. And uh, that photo should be preferably 
pretty in a good quality. You should be, you know, full size or, you know, you, you, this should not be blurry photo or uh, your hair should not be on, on, on the clothing. Most of the cases, even though I sent the, the clothing on the hair on the clothing, so they did a really good job and they, it's amazing, amazing actually job, not a really good job. It was really amazing. And they, if you cannot say that, it's, I mean, I, if I would be not in tech uh, industry, I would not say that it's it's a digital dress, you know. So uh, even though it's a super uh, puffy, uh, so Julie Pascal, LVMH uh, nominated designer, you know, the, the huge group of Louis Vuitton and uh, other brands. Uh, so this uh, her creations were moved to digital from physical. So that was interesting thing so what i would say and recommend if you are if you will try to uh, have this digital clothing uh, experience if you would like to have it uh, make sure you have a good photo <laughs> make sure you have a quality <laughs> photo to, to have the, the best outcome even though they will um you know, elaborate and they will try to find a way how to put it on you, but it's, 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 yeah. Uh, and it took so quickly. I mean, it, in imagining that if I would order some new, new dress, you know, for, for, for whatever the reason, or, you know, uh, I would still be waiting for it um, three days at least, at least. But uh, it was like half of a day and uh, I, I received it. So it's, uh, you know, I received the photo where I uh, was able to use it in, in, in social media. It's not yet published. It's, uh, yes. it's not yet published, but uh, <laughs> if, um, that I can use, you know, for, for cover digital or print, even though I do not encourage print. Uh, media to, to to be used so 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 much but yeah but on the digital space it's definitely a, a choice yeah okay so I think it's so nice that you got to try it and I would just say that if someone is interested in the, those kind of things um, take a look, uh, make some a bit of a Google uh, search. I think you can find some of the designs just to play around, especially yeah. if you have the software and the skills to play with that. I once uh, went to the Fabricant uh, website and they had this mm -hmm. uh, open source um, collection that I could download, mm -hmm. but I didn't really make a good use of it because I don't have the specific programs. I couldn't play around with their mm -hmm. designs. So I'm just saying, if you are the kind of person who knows how to interact with them, um, I believe there is something you can already mm -hmm. play around a yeah. bit and to some extent to familiarize yourself with what are we actually talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I would now suggest to move to the last part of our conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, these would be the five questions I have prepared for you. Oh, okay. And uh, I will read them one by one and I will ask you to uh, finish off the sentence with your opinion. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so the first question is, to me, sustainability is? I would say enjoying life more by having less. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, this is what, what it is for me, really. To, to, I mean, I really particularly feel that I have, you know, chaos in my room. I mean, I am so grateful that my, my boyfriend is such a, a tiny and amazing uh, husband to be. But, you know, but I'm, and I am such a mess. You know, I'm trying to do all, all the things around all my, my books, my, my computers, my everything. And then, you know, there is a calmness in the head and it's it's just it's just less it just you know it's a couple of things and you and personally me i feel such a fulfillment and i just have less and i enjoy things more so this is what i would really say that sustainability is nothing but it's enjoying life more by having less yeah that's so good that's so good it really touches my heart too so oh, i really like it okay the next one one thing I would like to see more of in the world is? 
I would be a super techie person here, but maybe I, I would, at this moment, I would really like to see more digital clothing and less of, uh, just to, to touch, you know, a point, but we just uh, went through all the, the uh, discussion in, uh, here. And to, to have this trend of uh, purchase, take a photo and uh, return um, way, of, way of life less. So, yeah. So let's get let's go digital. I would like to to have more 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 digital more digital things with better emotional touch. Yeah, this is fun. okay. Okay, <laughs> that's super nice, super nice. And the third one for a complete mm -hmm. beginner in the sustainability area, I would suggest to start off with. I would say that these simple simple steps: the reinvent your wardrobe. Get rid of finally, get rid finally of your unused clothes, resell it, remake it, rent it, you know, use it as a clothing, as a service, uh, you know, use, for example, for your friends, you can, you can rent, you know, like a, a subscription for, for your friends. I mean, I have a couple of friends who are trying, Odetta, I need something to wear, just give me something from your clo closet. Then okay, and I'm uh, giving, you know, and I can uh, uh, take some percentage, but of course I will not take it from my friends. But <laughs> but it's just you know, but try to try to try to reinvent things. Try to to think. Um, how can you again? Actually, coming to the first point, how to how to by having less, but have more, you know, have uh, try to re re reinvent yourself. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, the first one. Every sustainable business. I think that they should make that that they should make sure that they don't do greenwashing. Okay. This is also one point that they did not touch actually, but I would just pop up up, up, up to my in my head. But really, every sustainable business they have to they have to stick to 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 if they are sustainable, if they do, and if we can see that they are doing something with greenwashing it's it's absolutely no no and i can be, be, why this topic came to my mind because we had such cases in lithuania and then you know i'm the first sustainable business in lithuania and then we can say that you know they are using some plastic bags and in another country made t-shirts or something like that you know it's it's not uh, not nicely made t-shirts i mean the the um with People used in, in not the best way on payment and etc. I mean everything what the fast fashion is doing, in just in a smaller scale. So this is what, oh, I get angry right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but every sustainable business, please, if you are sustainable business, don't do greenwashing. Don't uh, don't pretend that you are sustainable if you are not. That's a good one. And then the last statement is in two to three years, I see fashion industry. Uh, definitely, I see definitely more digital for the 10th or 20th time this, uh, <laughs> this uh, that we just discussed this uh, uh, time, but hopefully less physical, but with um, better human, better human or emotional touch somehow in some kind of solutions, yeah. Thank you very much for that. Is there something you would really like people to take away from the stock, maybe key two to three facts or something that we didn't touch upon yet? Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe three simple points. Um, I mean, I will not summarize everything that we talked, but maybe, you know, in order, I mentioned reinvention, you know, and I'm just, I mentioned it and then I'm thinking people will say, well, what does it mean? I mean, what, what should I do? So in, in order to reinvent uh, our current situation or our current uh, way of working for, for brands, for example, or for our for, for ourselves, we have to collaborative work together I mean to, to deploy these technologies and tech innovations and to use it for striving and sustainability in, in fashion and this is the only way that we can actually reinvent that progress that we need to enable this technological innovations technological solutions to, to help ourselves to still live in this fragile uh, um, planet 
uh, maybe the second one um uh, don't be afraid to experiment you know for brands start to as mentioned co collaborate collaborate with fashion tech startups to elevate your your path to the future for individuals um, never stop having fun jump into the next top future you know trend play with it with the fashion you know go download a, a game you know uh, let's uh, seek for for example for virtual wardrobes you know or or, or or something like that and the last point just to, to cover and back, come back again to digital finance christmas is coming and so want some you know creative or unique ideas for christmas so uh buy a digital cloth for the person you know uh just uh, send them a e-card with that uh digital amazing newly unique and futuristic uh, dress uh, t-shirts bands uh, costume anything on a suit on 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 your friend or family so yeah make a family portrait with digital clothing <laughs> it's, it's also an idea <laughs> yeah so this is what i i would like to to take you out from this use uh, use your creativity and don't be afraid to use it yeah thank you very much for that i think our talk was so interesting i myself learned so many new things and uh, i am looking forward for the future though still um enjoying the day and uh, the present moment so i think yeah. these are super interesting trends coming up and we can see them uh coming closer and closer to us uh one single step at a time and i would definitely agree with encouraging people to play around uh, just relax uh, try out those different things try out uh, digital clothing start out with um, renting clothes or swapping with friends um, sharing them yeah swapping with uh, also yeah exactly mm -hmm. so i think there are so many great things going on and uh, i'm very excited to see um what's coming up next yeah it's was so such a pleasure I mean, I, I got so pumped talking with you. I mean, sometimes I'm I try, sorry to not putting my my sentences, you know, correctly or something. But uh, uh, you know, as 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 um, as I got this invite, so to talk, it was really it was really a pleasure. So thank you so much, Indra, for having me. And I I am so happy and motivated that you learned so so much. So don't be afraid to to. You know, to talk to me, um, any of the listeners, don't be afraid to, to ping me or, or, you know, chat with me about any kind of topics or solutions that you want for, for your small or medium or, or, or big businesses. So let's, let's, let's try to, to make tech work. <laughs>